Praise God. I'm so happy to have you with us here this morning or to hear this message. The topic is ancestral demons, hereditary spirits. That's what we're going to cover this morning. Ancestral demons, which are hereditary spirits. We're coming from Genesis, the fourth chapter, the 23rd through the 24th verses, through the first part of the 24th verse. Now, this is coming, I'm going to read this from the CJB, but we'll also read Exodus 20 and 5 from the um, King James Version. So I'm going to read Genesis 4, 23 through 24. And it says, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to me, wives of Lamech, hear what I say. I killed a man for wounding me, a young man who injured me. If Cain will be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech 77 fold. And he has an exclamation point on that. Exodus 25a. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. I want you to know we're going back to Lamech. Now, there are two Lamechs in Genesis. There is one in Genesis 4. In Genesis 4, which we're reading today, that's Cain's Lamech. And Genesis 5 is Seth's Lamech, which is Noah's father. These are two different individuals. I'm saying that because when we see the name Lamech, when you start researching on it online, they mix the stories together. No, these are two different individuals. And I'm dealing with Cain's Lamech this morning. Now, Cain is biblically recorded as the first murderer. And five generations later, through his lineage, Lamech is the second one, and that's coming out of Cain's lineage. So um, I want to talk about generational things that happen to us. And according to Pigs in the Parlor, which is a book written by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond, demon groupings uh, run together. They're tied together. So when you see one thing, it's, uh, it may be the ruling spirit but there are other things attached along with that ruling spirit. How many know when we grew up, many of us were taught that um, if, you, if you lie, you'll steal. You know, our parents taught us that if you lie, you'll do anything because with a liar, it's attached many different things. Many things people would do to cover up that lie. And sometimes it can, in extreme situations, lead to even theft and murder. And Pigs in the Parlor tells us about these demon groups and it's a, a well-known guide that is used in churches all across America for demon deliverance as a reference. And in today's text, we find that um, when, when it's similar to the grouping of bitterness, so we learn about bitterness in Pigs in the Parlor, and it says it includes resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, violence, temper, anger, retaliation, and murder. All of that is tied to bitterness. Now, when we go to Cain, Cain was bitter in dealing with his sibling rivalry with Abel, bitterness was there which led to all these things that are in that demon grouping, violence, his temper, retaliation, and ultimately Abel's murder. And here we are now, five generations later, here is Lamech. And he seems to be more extreme than Cain. He is the first one uh, that is biblically recorded as a bigamist. 
he has more than one wife. God taught Adam and Eve to be together as a family unit, man and woman. And after that, you see man and woman, one wife. But when you get to Lamech, you see it, the Bible notes him specifically as having two wives. And we're not going to go into that study right now. I'm going to leave it there. He comes to his wives and he says, someone wounded him. And for me, it seems like it is uh, an anger situation, a repeat of his, um, his, his lineage, his forefather Cain. Now he killed a man and he comes and explains it to his wives and to me trying to convince them that it's self-defense. But the way he says it, it sounds more like a braggadocious tone and it sounds more like murder. Because if he got into a tussle, if he felt like the man wounded him, was there a, a way that he could deal with that situation without murdering the person? So to me, it, that doesn't sound like the real truth of the matter. And then it also um, sounds arrogant and unrepentant. And he's, to me, he's done worse than Cain when I look at the scenario. Because at least Cain was sorry for what he did and to some degree, some degree uh, repentant or some degree humbled before the Lord because he didn't want to be out of God's sight. He called it excessive punishment. And um, he admitted to God that he did it and he received God's mercy at his request. And God gave a decree that anybody who killed him would be punished sevenfold. So here now, uh, arrogant Lamech says, well, if Cain got away with it and got uh, seven times of, of, a, uh, of a warning of a punishment, then it'll be 77 times for me. But who was he to give his own sentence? And who was he to threaten that God would avenge him 77 fold. The Bible doesn't even reveal that God even reached out to him, that God even had mercy on him in that situation. And then we, Genesis 4 is the last time we really see much about King's de descendants. And we do know that those that survived the flood would be his brother's Seth's defendants, descendants. So that curse, that curse of how wicked the world was, how wicked man was in the earth, it stopped with death because death was in the flood. The flood was God's way of purging the earth of wickedness. And that included Seth's, I mean, see, that include, included Cain's descendants. So now look at ourselves. And as we reflect on ourselves and look at our families and our spouses and our children, what hereditary demons are lurking? Because we looked at Cain this morning and we saw that, that murdering spirit coming out of bitterness. But what needs to be purged from us and our bloodline? And even though we saw death was a remedy uh, at the time of the flood, we don't want death to be our remedy. No other death except for the, de the death that Jesus already died. He already paid the price so that we don't have to die. We don't have to face judgment. There is a better choice. So why not just repent before them because that's all this requires. That's all it means when we're in this dispensation of grace. We have the opportunity to repent and repenting means not just a mouth thing. It deals with a turning, a turning. You've got to turn from the evil. Repent, clean it up now so that God doesn't have to judge it later. 
so that we don't see it turn up in our bloodlines and in our children and in our grandchildren. If we don't want to see these things again, then we must change the pattern. We must change the pattern if we want a different result. Some of us have been struggling in life with different types of cycles. And some of the cycles, many of the cycles don't feel good. You feel like you blow up too much. Your temper flares off too much. You slip of the tongue with cursing too much. Your addictions and drinking habits are too much. How can we fix it? We can change the pattern is what I'm talking about today as we deal with those generational and ancestral things. So as we see our children, we see the traits and characteristics of ourselves oftentimes. Some of it is good and some things neutral that are okay, but some things not so good. And often when we see these, it's a toddler or a young child, we laugh at the things that are not so good. We laugh when we see them do some things that are kind of on the naughty side. We laugh, but I submit to you that we should be praying and binding and rebuking. Because some of us, we know what's there. We may have had a, a little bit of this uh, anger, but it sometimes it's multiplied in our generations. Anger could be so bad, you'll unroot, tear up good relationships, and burn bridges. We don't want that for our seed. We don't even want it for ourselves, nor anything uh, connected to us. So let's get to praying and binding and rebuking. And that's how we can change the cycle. We can repent of those things now and ask God to turn it, ask God to favor us with his mercy in that situation. And some of us, uh, what's in our bloodline is, uh, it, it, we we may not have done it ourselves, uh, but we come from estrus, uh, ancestry sometimes that's rooted in paganism, rooted in idolatry, or rooted in uh, a demonic worship or, or witchcraft worship. We don't know what's in our heritage when you have roots that are maybe come from Africa and those religions that are not uh, uh, the ones that serve our true and living God. Some of us, uh, we do brag about having uh, Native American blood heritage, but you don't know what type of uh, worship that was not our Lord and Savior's worship. All of that is demonic. Anything that is not Christ, any worship that is not of God is uh, uh, rooted in idolatry. It's demonic, it's satanic, it's not good. And these things sometimes are in our bloodlines. And one thing I wanted to point out is that of necromancy. Some of us are consumed with talking to the dead. It's one thing to look at a picture of your, uh, your deceased mother and you may say, hi, mama, how you doing? I'm not talking about casual things like that so much. What I'm talking about is these things where people are doing necromancy and calling on ancestors and calling on the dead. While it is okay to honor our ancestors and honor their accomplishments, Jesus didn't tell us to pray to the dead. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. He says, ask the Father. That's what we should do as believers. Our hope is built on Christ. And we know that there are caveats to that. We can't just ask and receive everything we ask for because you must be abiding in him. Because if you know that you are abiding in Christ son, and we know that we, we, when that Jesus and the father are one, so we're not getting caught up in which one we ask in the daddy or the son. We're not uh, getting caught up in that because Jesus and the father are one. The father and the son and the spirit are one. It's just semantics. But what we do know is you must abide in Christ. If you are abiding in him, then you know his will and you're not gonna be asking for far-fetched things. You'll know how to ask according to his spirit, according to his will, what you would have. And he wants us to prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. But, I want, but I'm saying stop calling up and trying to talk to deceased ancestors. 
You don't know what ancestral demons you are attracting to yourself. Your ancestors and my ancestors, they have already passed on. And we may encounter a demon spirit copycatting them when we're calling things. It's a demon spirit imitating. And sometimes that demon spirit will bring good news or which would help you. And you feel like that was your uh, deceased mama, your deceased daddy who came and helped you. But that's not your loved one. Satan uses trickery to catch us in nets. And he gives illusions and he pretends and it feels genuine and, and it looks genuine. But once Satan reels you in, he'll show you his real self. And he is a monster. He will tie you up and oppress you and leave you out of your mind. And one can only pray that it won't be too late for your recovery. Necromancy is a sin. And God says, no, that's what our Bible teaches you, teaches us. God forbids necromancy. He forbids attempts to communicate with the dead. All contact with the spirit world, I mean the dark world, is forbidden, regardless of the nature of the spirits involved, because we have these things about good, uh, good demons, good uh, calling out good things, that things that's supposed to help us. And we have this thing about good witches and bad witches. There's no such thing. Any power, any supernatural power outside of God's power is a sin and abomination before God. God has to be our Lord and our source. Come to Bible study and we'll be happy to cover this in detail and give you the scripture that supports it. But if you need help, turn to God. Not the deceased, not the ancestors. When you pray, pray to God and not to the dead. God is the one who is, is able to help you in all things. Yes, our hope has to be built, just like the song says, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We cannot trust the sweetest rain, but we wholly lean on Jesus' name. And I thank God for those that have got, who have gone before us. We don't know every secret that they had. We don't know, but in case, uh, but in case one went to the hoodoo man, I'm asking God to cleanse me in case one made an arrangement that bound me to Satan. I'm asking God to deliver me because I don't need to live a life of tragedy. I live a life. I'm not living a life of one thing. If it's not one thing, it's another. No, I'm not going to live a life where well, every time I get something in my hand or where something blesses me, the, uh, something blows on it. And before you know it, I'm broke again. That's not the life for me. And what about you? If you're tired of the same negative cycles in your life, are you tired of the tragedy that you can't even explain? Then I'm, I'm saying repent this morning. We've got to repent. Grandma may not have repented before she went to the grave, before she left the earth. So you can repent and get it off you and your loved ones. Break every ancestral curse and renounce every hereditary demon. Let's get free today because we must change the pattern and stop the cycle of suffering. That's not a, a test. Some things I understand is a test. God ordained it to make us strong, but a lot of this stuff is not sent from God. So if you wanna stop the continuous limitations, the continuous oppression and devastation and defeat from hovering over you, hovering over us like buzzards hovering over prey. I'm asking you to pray with me this morning because we want to be free. And the Bible tells us he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And it's a, it's a strange thing to be in Christ and still oppressed and depressed. We need to get free of that thing. So Father, for every sin and for every abomination, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for every iniquity. Forgive our sins and those of our ancestors, uh, three, four, five generations 
back. Wash us clean and make us whole because we renounce everything that's attached to us from the kingdom of darkness. Uh, we hurl it back in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. You can lift your hands with me even in your homes, lift your hands uh, as we begin to pray, because I break all ancestral covenants made with dark forces. I bind spiritism, that seances and spirit guides and necromancy. I bind the occult, occultation, including astrology. I bind demonic inheritance, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or any inherited curses, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We bind bitterness uh, rooted in resentment and hatred, uh, unforgiveness and violence and tempers and anger and, and retaliation and murder. We bind pride, pride, ego, vanity, self-righteousness, haughtiness, importance, where we think ourselves more highly than we ought to think, uh, arrogance. Uh, I break the power of every demonic wolf. Uh, I bind lies and falsehood and error, misfortune, addiction and obesity. I bind the deaf and dumb spirit and the Leviathan. I bind and drive out rebellion in the name of Jesus. I uproot every spirit that provides provokes us to dishonor our parents and to dishonor authority. We stand against every curse uh, causing barrenness and unsuccessful and no marriage. Uh, I chase these out of our lives and away from our children and our grandchildren and us and I chase them out of our siblings and their lineage as well. These are our tribe and we stand with them as we stand for all today. Forgive us and wash us clean. I come against oppression and I come against destruction and death because it says in Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against us shall we condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and our righteousness is of the Lord. Fill us, Lord, with the love of God in our hearts and in our life. Uh, fill us, Lord, with your peace. Uh, now lift your hands and be filled with joy. Be filled with gentleness, goodness, self-control, and faith. Uh, be filled with purity and the power of the Holy Ghost so that you can sustain and be free from evil. Inhale. Exhale before the Lord. Exhale the bad. Inhale the good, deep breath. I pray you're doing it, hallelujah. Exhale the bad and inhale the spirit of God. I pray a fresh anointing on you today, hallelujah. Prosper and be in health in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Now clap your hands and give God praise. If you believe you're free, Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. And for those of you who want to be saved, hallelujah, if you need help with the next steps, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, forgive me, wash me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Now we receive him by faith. Salvation is by faith. And if you believe what you just prayed with me, then you are saved. And in the Bible, in Romans 10, 9, and 9 through 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Remember, we don't want to be like Lamech, repeating the sins of our fathers and reaping ancestral curses. Neither do we want this for our children. We must keep our life clean. Thank you for listening. And if you want to know more about salvation through Christ, please contact us through our website at www.sacredtabernacle.org and we'll respond 
and also tell you how to attend our services as well as give you information to help you to maintain your walk with Jesus. God bless you.